What's up, everyone? The castle here. A lot of stuff. All right, so um, right away, I'm just gonna kind of go over uh, what you know what I'm doing with X Live. Um, kind of moving forward with that. I've got a bunch of things to talk about. Um, one of them is that I am uh strongly considering at this point in time, I'm I put up my uh, a Patreon. Um, I don't know, <laughs> like, if I'm doing this right, I don't know for sure, but, like, basically it's it, like, uh, if you want to support me further, uh, beyond just buying Revulsion, or maybe you already own the game and you want to support me, um, here you can, you can do that. So, um, I don't know if these tiers are good, I'd like to get some feedback on the page. Um, it's up for review right now, and I suppose that any you know anything that needs to be reviewed they they can uh you know talk to me about it but uh with that said um yeah so i'll i'll be uh i'll be promoting my uh patreon um a lot more in the uh coming days and uh and far future probably cuz you know patreon it'll it's something i probably should have had set up for a while now um this uh this could this could be a good thing overall. And these posts that I put back, like, way back in the day are, like, ancient. Like, wow. When Project Stray was just called Project Stray and it looked like that. <laughs> Whoa, this is some old posts, man. Really old stuff. Anyway, with that said, um, I also want to go over, uh, you know, like, you know, feedback and all the comments and everything like that, starting off with, uh, um, uh, Alley Cat's, uh, thing and everything like that, so, um, but before I get to that, I want to, um, uh, kind of show off what I'm cooking up here. So, I've got a lot of things that, this is all stuff that's already done, but these are the things I want to, I want to get done, and I'm going to start going pretty heavy into this, like, I mean, I already I already work a lot, so but this is this is uh, something that I need to get in place and in a functional state. The level editor the level editor is coming along. Um, the more and more I tweak and and, and um, poke and prod at its uh, functional systems, the you know the more refined it gets. But since it doesn't ever have an orthographic view, there are certain things that will just always feel a little bit wonky, and there's not much I can do about that. The thing is, though, I think overall the system is pretty cool. Um, there's just a lot of like little things that I need to get in place, the ability to duplicate prefabs, like this lighter, shiny metal texture or material, rename the project. From, uh, and remove revulsion specific things. This is an official branch off. This is an official thing. As of um, as of Sunday, I actually began ramping up on going full out into development on the new game. So if we want to mark the day on the calendar uh, for when I actually really began working on revulsion, it was the 29th. All right. So I'm now officially three days in. Um, did I say revulsion? Um, the official day I began working on X Alive. Wow, I'm going to have to reprogram my brain. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, so X Alive now is still a tentative name, but it seems to be something that's not taking. All right, and it kind of works. Um, since since it's um it, 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 since there's a sort of philosophy around transhumanism, it's sort of blame, uh, in a, a cyberpunk dystopia kind of. Uh, blame uh, future universe kind of a thing. Uh, it um it there's X Alive is kind of an interesting uh I you know uh, name because it kind of brings up the idea is like you know is something that's sentient really alive or X Alive are you alive? It's a survival where some you know people are choosing to be things that aren't technically living creatures at this point in time and it's it, it's just an interesting idea. In fact. Um, one of the one of the um, ideas I have for the art is to have the transhumanist in the center and the human reaching up and uh, you know touching a finger with uh, you know a, a fully sentient robot you know and kind of like having that be sort of like a um, 
I, I, it's an interesting idea. Like, uh, it's it's something that's in my on my on my head, and and I think that it could be really interesting to have that. So like, uh, open world survival in this kind of a game is uh, definitely very different from other stuff. I don't think I've seen anything like this before. Most people just stick to zombies. Um, there will be no zombies in this. Not really, anyway. Um, large block ramp. Mostly, mostly this is all just like light fixtures and everything like that. So let me show the, um, let me show a glimpse into the level design process that I have planned. Now, keep in mind, this is fully multiplayer game. So we have development for being able to uh, develop the levels together as well. So even if you don't play the game, you might enjoy the level editor and you can build, you can build these worlds that uh, um, you can build worlds in in the game in a full creative mode. So the creative mode in this is actually just unlocking basically the level editor and flying around and utilizing the same tools that I used uh, to work on the map with my friends, probably on live stream, because I'm probably going to be streaming a lot of the level design stuff, and there's going to be a lot of talk. We're going to be talking to each other. There's going to be people flying around and placing stuff and and working together, but but it's also an environment that you fully utilizes a hierarchical instancing system, which means that there's going to be a lot of prefabs flying around. So how does that work? How do I, how do you build with something like that? Well, in a multiplayer environment, because usually whenever you go to work on a prefab, you switch off, and then you're no longer in that same instance with everybody else. But I'm developing. I have develop. I have already developed a system that uh, gets away from that and allows you to work on the prefabs while in still still within the same instance as everyone else. So uh, take this for example. All right, so you have a level that's just called like a prefab farm. I'm probably just going to call it a farm from now on. But, you know, everything's still very early right now. So you go into a prefab farm. And it loads the level up. And it'll give you you'll be able to kind of like look around and you'll see um, oh yeah there's like other things too like the you don't start falling immediately whenever you switch your editing mode and stuff like that so you'll see that this is like one area that's inside of a giant prefab so like if I go right here you'll notice that this is this this area that I'm looking at right here is inside of a box a big box that's called um, node zero one right now the way the levels are being designed is very much inspired by blame however I'm still going to have it be on a planet it's not necessarily going to be you know continuously going up into the stratosphere uh, maybe I'm not really sure about this yet but basically there are these huge structures these massive structures that I'm just going to refer to them as nodes and these nodes are um, you know some of them will be duplicate uh, you know geometry some of them will you'll sometimes run into this you know a node that has the same structure as another node somewhere else in the map but when you when you're building the uh, node uh, you have the ability this is an entire this whole entire structure in here is an instance all right and then I gotta remember um, ability to hold shift and fly faster shift and move faster in editor I keep forgetting about that it's pretty important because right now you start working with bigger and bigger areas and there you go so um, this right here for example is a prefab of a pillar piece and this pillar piece is now sitting over here so somebody who's working on like this pipe you know these pipes like this they can work on this and then they switch into volume mode and they can um, they can choose to save the prefab and it'll save it here and then anywhere that this these pipes are being used in this big area over here you know will instantly will be instanced like it'll immediately update so you see this is that prefab over there sitting over here and so is it it's also being used over here as well so you see how this is an environment where you can get a group of people together and we can all work on the same thing now 
the, uh, there's a there's another thing over here for uh, uh, you know an, another node. So the way these nodes are going to be placed in the actual level that you are meant to play, you know, when you're playing the game properly, there'll be a bunch of different nodes, and there'll be bridges in like in the actual map itself. There'll be prefabs for things like bridges that allow you to go across at higher floors, and these things are actually really tall. The structures are are like really crazy and everything like that. But when we're actually arting things out and making it look better and improving, you know, the, the visual uh, fidelity of it, we might not even need to go into the actual playable map. We only need to uh, to go in and really modify these uh, the prefabs that are just sitting everywhere in this world. Now, um, one of the other things that's neat about these prefab things is that there's an option here where if you click this check mark, you can clear the prefab. But it still remembers its prefab name, right? That that will always be remembered. So if people are starting to get lag, you know, lag because they're, you know, we're an editor and all of these objects are being replicated over the network and everything like that. Once it starts to get too big, we can actually clear these prefabs uh, temporarily and make it so that um, so that it knows not to, you know, not to save a blank prefab uh, under any circumstances. But it. Um, it makes it so that there's fewer objects in the world and we can focus only on the stuff that we actually want to work on, right? So like you can fly up to this one area over here and you can be like, okay, I need to work on this pillar. You can load the prefab, it'll appear there and then you can save it again and then you can clear it so that it's not lagging everybody out, um, you know, eventually down the line because there's going to be a lot of objects and they're all going to be replicating. But what about... Uh, you're probably wondering, well, what about when you're actually playing the game? Isn't that going to lag all the players, especially when there's monsters and stuff around? When you're actually playing the game, everything is loaded in a more efficient manner, where it's assumed automatically that all the clients that are playing the game have the same file as you, and everyone loads the entire map locally as a series of, you know, just objects that are not replicating. So, um... So you don't have to worry about the overhead of the extra replication. They just become essentially very large maps with lots and lots of components that are just sort of placed exactly where the replicating objects would have been. So you have to just keep in mind, like, I'm, I'm, I'm making it so that it's possible for us to make these gigantic environments, but also sort of, like, make it so that you don't have to worry too much about the, you know, the, the, the overhead and everything like that when it comes to actually having to replicate like I don't know how many objects at once like we can work on this one node together like me and like five other people can we we can all collaborate and work on this one node and uh, then like when we're done uh, you know just click save and it, it, we save that to a file and then when we actually load up the game to play it uh, you know properly it loads everything in a way where it's not all replicating. It's just a bunch of uh, objects that are just sitting in space. It's um, it, it, I am actually managing to do this in a way where not only is it multiplayer, not only can we work on all of the prefabs at once in one instance where everybody can just join in and we can work together, but it, it also makes sure that we can avoid situations where, you know, it throttles the server, server too much because everybody has to replicate every single object, uh, you know, way too often. With that said, though, it's probably not even going to be necessary to worry about that. The Unreal 4 engine is a beast when it comes to replication, apparently allowing to replicate a shit ton of things that I never even thought possible. Like, this doesn't even scratch the surface. Um, some of the maps I've already worked on have so much stuff in them that I'm actually shocked that it, it even works at all. But it does, and it's fine. And I've had, like, five or six people flying around while we were doing it. So, um, with that said, you know, if people start feeling lag and we're, you know, there's an area that we're not working on, we can just choose to clear it for now, and then we'll load it back up, and you know, later on. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much how this uh, development process is going to go, and you'll be seeing this in videos too. So like, if I want to have like a bendy version of this pipe right here, um, I can actually grab this, right? Click load, and then put it back again. All right. So 
Now this is not a prefab. This is just lo it just loaded a bunch of editable objects. That's another thing too. You can use these as rubber stamps. These uh, uh, these volumes can be used as sort of like a rubber stamp where you can create non-instance versions of these objects as well. Um, and that's you know that ends up being really efficient. Uh, you know, like a really efficient way to, uh, to you know kind of bring this together. Now I can I can delete all of the ends of this, right, and make a curved and 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 have all these pipes utilize a curved version of this object, and then I can place a new uh, prefab volume, which uh, one of the things that I need to be able to do is actually duplicate uh, prefab volumes. But so I place a prefab volume like this, right, and then I just change it to zero two, right. And then um, now I have now when I click save, I have a uh, I have just saved another prefab that utilizes the bendy version of this. Which in in this case, I'll probably turn this up a little bit so that I can yeah yeah it needs to take up a little bit more space so that you can so that I can actually place the uh, bendy version of the pipes so they'll actually bend upwards in this direction or maybe I can do downwards. It doesn't really matter. Now keep in mind too, this same exact technology can be utilized for making the weapons. Now the weapons can have a similar thing. Basically, um, uh, it's, it's a prefab volume sitting in space, and you have a bunch of different parts, like the handle of the gun, the side of the gun, and you could just sort of slap together a bunch of different objects to make one weapon that looks really interesting and, and different. And everybody can be working with you while it's happening. Or people could be making the maps. They could be making... These, you know, this, these other sections, they can be working on the actual level while somebody uh, comes over to the side and, you know, starts working on guns because that's what that person feels like doing. So we could end up with this really collaborative and interesting thing, and I don't think it's just limited to that. It's possible, too, that, like, you know, other items, other objects, anything, anything you can really think of can utilize this system, this hierarchical instancing system, in which case we can, we can actually utilize... Uh, Oh, we can just collaborate like hell, like in ways that, you know, even AAA studios, they ain't got shit on this, man. They ain't got shit on this. And I, I already, I've already talked about that. I don't know if a lot of people actually understand it. They'll be like, well, Unreal already has insisting. Yeah, it ain't this way. It, it's not, it's not this uh, fluent. So, uh, whatever. <laughs> Programmers don't know how to design stuff that people actually want to use. Um... With that said, all right. Um, yep. So this is one. This is an example of one node. I'm not really sure if this is large enough to be a node, but these nodes are actually really big. And I'm thinking like down here would be like a sewer system that kind of just goes underneath. Now between the nodes, um, I'm also planning to have you know more organic uh, trees and grass and that kind of shit going on outside to that. So there'll still be there'll still be things that need to happen in the actual playable map uh to at least some extent um but you know uh, you can once you once you have these big prefabs like this you can load up the other type of level so let me uh let me get into the other map and uh so open world here So overall, I, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about this, and I'm gonna jump over to uh, to the uh, posts that are everything like that. But uh, let's see. You see how there's two versions of this uh, of this one node. So like, and they're also they're not even like they're not even lined up with each other, because any once you have these uh once you have these prefabs, you can you can do almost essentially anything you want with them. Um, they uh, they don't have to be oriented in any specific way you can have one of these nodes can actually even be kind of like angled downward and you can have like cracks and make it look like you know the, the the ground gave in and there's like a crater next to it or something like that like there's all kinds of ways that you can um make these nodes feel like they're different from the others because um even in spite of the fact that they're utilizing similar uh you know level geometry and structure uh it's it's still possible to do that so like check this out so like yeah, this one's kind of, I don't want to do the Z. Let's go down a little bit. Yeah. So like now, so now this world, so I switch into combat mode. Immediately when you switch into combat mode, 
Uh, it's not just combat mode anymore because this is an open world survival game. But basically what it's doing is it's loading your character that you currently have as your playable uh, character or whatever. Or maybe it creates a new one for you in this one instance or something like that. But whatever it is, you can you, you choose a, a, you know, a character and then you can actually just begin playing the game in this you know, have weird prefab area, right? Like, it's designed in such a way where you can begin playing uh, organically, and monsters and you know, and stuff will begin spawning, and um, it's it's all meant to be just just you know, there's still people flying around, you know, placing stuff and and making things happen all over the place, and you can actually just decide, you know what, I'm kind of done working for a little bit, I want to actually play the game while it's being worked on, so you can actually just switch into it, that's the goal, it seems doable, it's pretty cool, and that's what I want, so, but with that said, check this out, so like, I can, so like, uh, if you can imagine that, you know, this is a big doorway that leads into this, into this node, uh, when you leave the node, there's, um, there's like big, bigger like open terrain um let's see am i looking in the right spots now that's rock spikes are these actually using the correct textures Oh yeah, yeah. So like you can kind of see like, you know, maybe there's um Oh yeah, that's right. A lot of the new objects that I created are not um are not in the editor yet. But like, yeah, so you have this sort of like organic like section right here where there's just a um, you know, a, a big terrain mesh kind of a piece and I can lock this so that it doesn't turn blue every time I look at it. And uh let me uh go ahead and get a uh, sunlight in here. I call it the revulsion sky. I guess I'll have to change that pretty soon, but right and then um, aim this so that it's facing downward so that there's some sunlight and then you can kind of see already like Yeah, so here's one of those giant nodes and then between the node when you look up There's gonna be these bridges going across It's gonna be very much like blame in that respect, but there's still gonna be some you know some semblance of organic uh, life, you know, they'll they'll be trees and and weird shit like that, but it's like, it's like almost if something, you know, just sort of waffled this uh, crazy ancient city place right into the, uh, right into the, into the planet, right? Like, and it's all just sort of dug in and interesting and like, you travel between this and there's, you know, there's smaller buildings and then there's caves that lead downward and, you know what I mean? So, like, that's the idea. And, and you, you know, we end up just building a bunch of these different types of nodes and we have them all kind of just sort of, you know, uh, splotched around each other and, you know, at different heights, at different angles and different, like, and, um, and like, you know, I can decide that, you know, I want to build my base, like, right here. Like if I want to build my base right here, I can, uh, you know, I can switch into that. Now, in I'm I'm gonna have to just call it in um I guess play play mode or something like that. But in play mode, you have access to a way to build um things. Like if you play the human race, the humans have the best uh, building capabilities, and we'll have like a bunch of ways to like craft blocks and stuff like that. And it's very much like Seven Days to Die or Minecraft, and you can you know you can build like a little cool fort area and um, you can choose these kind of neat spots and you can cut down trees and, you know, you know, open world survival type stuff. But then you have these big, giant, like, imposing, like, nodes with, you know, pathways and all kinds of just interesting shit everywhere, right? Like, in any direction that you actually look, it's like you're always in some kind of weird, futuristic, cyberpunk metropolis, even though there's still organic... Uh, life and geometry in between these nodes. It's yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, all right. Let me uh, let me exit out of this. Um, I'll be working on this tonight, so I should probably get back to streaming very soon. But I, it doesn't feel quite right just yet. Um, let me let me get back to this. Okay, so new open or open world survival that is exceptional undertaking i i don't know i mean yeah this is definitely going to be a lot more of an interesting undertaking but 
um, the way I'm designing this is I'm doing it in a way where it's fun for people to help out with the development. Different strategy, completely different beast here. If I'm not if I'm not working alone on the game, the world is going to be a lot bigger and a lot more detailed because there's going to be people who you know who just hang out in the Discord and be like, "Hey, can I jump in?" And they'll be like, "Yeah, here's my IP address, and you know, here here we go." And, you know, it'll it'll usually be limited to just people that I know uh, fairly well and I trust. But yeah, like it'll be a pretty interesting experience. Um. Talking of the Asia story, there's a very symbolic story that I recently did. Chinese folklore. Um, <laughs> for the journey, I strongly believe you should pay very close attention to this to story. If you are to have a looter shooter involving robots in a journey, moving, traveling, easy, to, you know, east to west or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Um... Also having four to six playable characters with different skill sets. I'm thinking of three at the moment, and that's humans, transhumans, and uh, and sentient, which all have their own little fundamental things. Like one thing I was thinking that would be kind of cool is that the uh, the sentients would have like a, a you know the ability to have like a little instant storage box on their back. Like one of the things that uh, sentients can can do is that they have a lot of physical strength. They're very strong. They're they're robots. They're, they're, you know, they can prob probably moving around with tank treads for all we know, but probably, you know, something like that. It's like almost like controlling a vehicle. Um, a human can walk up and, you know, uh, access a little storage container on your backpack or something and, and actually like store things in an instance container. You know, it's, it's little things like that. I want to, I want to cause the three different classes to rely on each other you know what i mean like humans are not humans are playing in hard mode they're very frail they're very they're 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 uh they you know they have the highest requirements when it comes to s survival and everything like that and transhumans are great crafters but they're not you know they're they're sort of middle of the road they're like the tanky class they can't really do a lot of damage they they don't have access to you know damage dealing capabilities but they can defend you know they have the humanity they recognize the reason that you need to defend the humans and then the the sentients are war machines but they just don't know how to build they don't know how to construct they just know how to take everything apart and just destroy those things they 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 you know they're kind of like bastion you know they're sitting there with the you know these 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 massive weapons they they can uh, do tons and tons of damage but you know why do they exist like why am i here why am i why do you know why do why am i fighting you know what is this uh you know need for my humanity even though i'm not even a machine like what what connection is there that i should have with the humans kind of stuff like that right and uh you know and then and then of course there's the there's the other aspect too like where did this structure come from where where are the you know where is this uh all and a lot of it's coming a lot of the inspiration is coming from blame selling the ip was about uh, 125k jesus are you serious like are you really serious press it would t tap out at 250k i don't think anyone even knows what who I am or what I'm doing, I it just it just isn't happening. Like I just don't see it. Maybe maybe if I start seeing more than like three you know upvotes, uh, like if I get three upvotes on on my one of my YouTube videos, I'm like on fire, man. Woo yeah, you know what I mean. Like I just slam dunked. Um, Steam sales and money off. You absolutely spot on for this. If something that says fifty percent. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um uh then uh, I'm I'm gonna price. Whatever I work on, I'm going to price it higher and then just do lots of sales. Um, it, that's just the way to do it. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more to, to take in here, but uh, in essence, where you're suggesting open world shooter, what happened to society? It's uh, everyone's gone, like the Dwemer from fucking um, uh, Skyrim. Loved your level. Thank you. Um, yeah. I still have to finish the uh, non-brutal Doom version of my Doom 2 map. I'm uh, going to throw some. Game-wise, you may not wish to take a look at uh, uh, Cairo, uh, UDK, Cairo. Um, uh, I could take a look at it. There's a lot of really cool MC Escher. Yes, definitely some someone to be looking at for this. Like The more mysterious these, uh, these giant structures are, the better. Also, I've been talking for about 30 minutes. I'm going to have to go ahead and... Um, uh, kind of speed through this a little bit and, and kind of get through it. 
Um, so let's see. There's also advertising in Cyberpunk. You find the adverts and clashing dissonance in the page magazine, but the beauty is that the reader will zone out 99% of the page and just focus on 1%, even though that is... Uh, an analogy would be an art gallery with pop art to 7th, 17th century oil paintings. Yeah. I'll have to take a look at more of this. There's a lot of actual responses, actually. I'm seeing a lot of, um, I'm seeing a lot more going on here with, uh, you know, what's being said and everything like that. Apparently, I made a, a half-decent call on, on uh, cryptocurrency and bought in. I had a gut feeling that it was going to go up, but that's another topic altogether. Prefabrication. What is it? Uh, sounding better, way more positive. It's good to hear it. Uh, cringe. <laughs> Stop cringing. All right, all right. Materials that you think totally, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for now, it'll be all right. Oh, no, my cat just, like, let's see. You've called it for some, uh, okay, and yes, this guy's a genius. Uh, Nier, it, um, blame, why did I say Nier? Oh yeah, Nier Automata is actually pretty fucking brilliant too. I haven't played that yet though, but good God, it it just seems amazing to me. I need to like, get a Nier Automata. <laughs> like if I can get a donation or somebody can buy it for me, I'll fucking play it. I'll stream me playing it. Um, with that said though, Flame is beautiful. It really is. And I love the the insight he has as well to like how, you know, a transhumanist would exist and uh, you know, um the sort of humanity sort of still kind of exists in some ways, but is also um you know, like how many retina would you have as a transhumanist? You would you know what I mean? Like little details like, well, my retina aren't working you know that now that we've gone past a certain point i my second eye isn't uh functioning the same way and the little details like that he he's really good at telling a, a lot a big story with very little text <laughs> it's absolutely amazing i love i love the entire concept i really do all right so with that said i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to end this unusually long video i hope everyone who watched enjoyed and uh yeah uh definitely be staying tuned for more because uh, things are going to get some really spicy very quick. A spicy, a meatball, or ancient a Chinese parsley. Alright, take it easy guys.